Okay, today I wanted to expand a little bit on an old video that I called Layers and uh, I wanted to again go over the concept and you will see at the end of this video things will make a bit more sense and it will be able to expand your knowledge of the fretboard. So as you can see today I have the same fingering which is just the major scale like we've played many times in position. And in the first one is the fingering, so the fingers that we use. So two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, and so on. You can see right here. Usually most people stop there. This is great, obviously, for technical work. If you have to figure out how to play a, a scale more you know, accurately, that's great. But um, I want to say, and that's why I called the video, you know, how to add 66% of knowledge because obviously that's just a third and then you are just seeing the same information uh, and you analyze it in different ways. So the, obviously now the second box will be just the notes, the note names, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. And uh, every time, depending on what I need, my eyes see something different. It's like, and it's just like having different layers that I can remove and, you know, at, at command, so to speak. The last one is the function, so basically the intervals and the, the, the degrees contained within that scale, so the distance between the, the, the note and the root. So we'll have the root, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh, major seventh in this case, the root again. When I go past the octave, obviously if I'm thinking about extensions, I can call the, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, the fifth usually is still called the fifth, the thirteenth, a major seven and the octave. So again, depending on what you need, that's more like the function of the notes in that within that key. You see that at the bottom of the box, I've written same in every key, changes in different keys, and same in every key because obviously the fingering. If I go to B flat instead of G, the still the same, but the notes change: B flat, C, D, and so on. Uh, the function, the degree, stays the same. The root is still the root, the second or the ninth are still the second and the ninth. So when you start to approach things this way, you have more of an understanding of things that uh, are happening on the fretboard, not just where to put your fingers, but literally what you are doing, you know, what those notes mean. Uh, in the second um, slide here, I've done the same thing with the pentatonic, and we'll we'll, we'll see how we can uh, you know use all this stuff to uh, to figure out different chords and chord shapes and extensions within chords and all that in one second. So again, pentatonic fingering, usual stuff: one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Then the notes obviously are. In, the ca in this case, G, B flat, C, D, F, G, B flat, C, and so on. And the function degree, root, flat, three or minor third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, root, and so on. It's going to be the sharp nine, eleventh, and so on. Obviously, same thing is true if I move to B flat, the fingerings are still the same. But the notes will change, B flat, D flat, and so on, E, uh, e flat, F, and so on. Function and the degree is still the same. So now, in my last slide, I can see now, let's just move to chords. Um, I can play this chord like this, with a, you know, with a bar and the and thumb. I can play it all with a bar, but this is basically just the G7, okay? So... Um, the shape and the fingers I use again, if I go to B flat, are still the same. The notes will change. The notes are G, F, B, D, and G. If I go to B flat, the notes change. Uh, this is now where we can use all the information that we have seen in the previous slides because now if we can organize the, the notes by by degree of function, now I say that that's my root, flat seven, third, fifth, and root. And if I start to look at what notes are actually around that area, this is how I usually visualize, you know, where, let's say the flat five is, this, if, if this is the five, the fifth, the flat five is there, sharp five is there, the flat nine is there, ninth is there, 
sharp 9 is there, the natural 13 is there, the sharp 5 or the flat 13, the 11th is there, and so on. So by doing this, the more you do this, the more you're going to be able to map out where things are within obviously a particular area. Obviously this, in this case, these are chords and scale with a root on the sixth string, so to speak, uh, or in these points, so to speak. Uh, if I change the root, if I change the shape with a root on the A string, the extensions will be, the, you know, the notes in the extension will be in, in a different uh, spot. Um, so what I suggest is for you to start organize things in this way to begin with. And obviously the more you do it, the more you, you will need not to do this. So this is the same chord. Within that box, you see I have the name of the chord up here. Within the box, I have the, the fingering. And then the first line at the bottom, each note is the function. So that's my root, that's the flat seven, that's the third, that's the fifth, and this is the root. And then I can put the notes if I want to. That's a G, that's an F, that's a B, obviously within the G7. If this is just a dominant seven chord, I don't need the notes. Hope this makes sense. I think the more you do this, the more you're, you're going to be able to see genuinely what's going on in that position of within the chord and where the extensions are within that chord and where the chord tones are within the chord. So you will be a bit more in control on how to change that chord, modify it, add, add extensions or alterations and stuff like that, uh, or to build scales by altering, let's say if I want to have a major, uh, a major scale, and I want to create the harmonic major. I know that our harmonic major has the flat six instead of the natural six. I know that. One, two, three, four, five. I can do it that way or this way. Okay, and that's the idea really. Uh, so you are more in control of what you're doing. The more you do this, the more you will have a, a genuine knowledge of what's going on with fretboard. Uh, obviously, this is connected with many other concepts like you know knowing intervals, knowing a bit of theory. But the more you you take note of these chords in this particular way and scales in a particular way, the more you have you will have control over what you're doing. And in the future, you will not need to do this anymore because obviously, you know, there are only so many ways that things work on the guitar. So you will have the knowledge of the whole fretboard. Okay, if this was of any value to you, please consider sharing this video, send it to somebody uh, that might uh, get some value out of it. Check out the links in my description. There's a tip jar if you want to leave a, a little tip there. There's a PayPal tip jar. Uh, you can listen to my music, which will not cost you anything. And uh, you can leave a comment, which is great, or like and subscribe, which obviously always helps the, the channel. Take care. Bye-bye.